Hello everyone, my name is Tom J. McCoy and I'm an editor and colorist from Arizona. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about Dehancer Pro, which is an OFX plugin for DaVinci Resolve that emulates film, and it's really good. So right off the bat, um, if you're looking for some specific information about Dehancer, I'm gonna put some time codes in the video description. You could jump ahead to those, those sections that have the information that's relevant to what you're looking for. This video is gonna be kind of a general explanation of Dehancer. I'm just gonna kind of go through each section and we're gonna basically grade the shot together and I'm gonna go through my process when using it. Um, obviously there isn't a perfect way to do any, anything, so feel free to mess around with you know this process and you know change it to what works for you. So Dehancer Pro is a film emulation software that goes into DaVinci Resolve that allows you to take a bunch of analog film stocks, uh, still, you know, still stocks or motion picture stocks, and it puts them digitally into Resolve for you and you can kind of mess about with them as you please. Uh, what's great about Dehancer Pro that, that I think works really well is that every single tool that's inside of it reacts the way that film emulsion would react to light. Um, and I'll kind of explain that as I go, um, but let's go ahead and start our node tree. So I got this image, I'm gonna add three nodes. Um, and this is just the way that I like to do it. You could change this if you'd like. Um, this first one is gonna be a correction node. The second one is going to be a color space transform. And then our third one is gonna be Dehancer. Uh, so first things first, we're gonna go to this tool here, uh, change our color management and make sure that we're set to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. That's standard for working, um, for coloring for something for the internet. Put that there. Color space transform. We're gonna drag and drop that onto there. Now this was shot with the Alexa LF. So we're gonna choose RE Alexa, log C, and, and that's gonna convert our image to a Rec 709. Uh, doesn't look like we have any clipping, um, but if we did, this color correction adjustment we're here would make sure that we don't have anything clipping. So uh, we don't, which is good. So we're just gonna leave it as is, but just put that there for now. Uh, and then this third node here, we're gonna go ahead and put Dehancer and just drag and drop that onto there. And it's gonna default to Kodak Vision 3 250D and it's gonna put grain on. Personally, I like to color with the grain off. So we're just gonna take that off. Uh, we'll enable it later if we wanna put that on. So I told Dehancer that I'm working off of a Rec. 709 image. Uh, depending on what color space you're working on, you can tell it, you know, I'm working in 2020, whatever. And you could also change your color space transform to be after Dehancer if you want. Personally, this is the way that I like to do it. All right, so first thing, we got a lot, a lot of tools here and a lot of options. So I'm just gonna kind of go through it one by one the way that I would attack it. And we'll kind of bounce around as I just kind of talk. So. Uh, you have all your different film stocks here and you'll have to download these. It takes like a minute or whatever, but um, you got a lot, a lot of options. You have still film, black and white film. You have motion picture film. You have Polaroid, all kinds of different stuff. Um, if you're looking for kind of a baseline to start, I think that the Vision 3 500T is a really nice starting point if you just want to get like an analog image going for you. Um, and it's going to default pretty flat, but we're going to do some color adjustments and get it where it looks really good. So if you're not sure, uh, this is a good starting point that you can kind of bounce around afterward. Once you pick the film profile you wanna work off of, so we're gonna use Vision 500T for this shot. Uh, the second thing I normally do is choose my print. So there's a couple of different options here. There's four options. Most of the time, you're only gonna use two of these, uh, which is linear or Kodak print film. So if you're using one of these motion picture stocks, I would definitely recommend trying the print film. Um, because that's really what it would look like. And I can adjust that real quick. So you get a really different image. And basically what this is right here, if we're just doing linear, it's saying, hey, I'm using this film stock and I'm coloring it digitally. Just give me the raw input output of that. Um, whereas with Kodak print film, this is saying, hey, I'm using this film stock and I'm going to convert it to be printed onto 35 millimeter film for projection. And that's basically emulating that look. So there's a bunch of science behind it and feel free to look it up. But for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna explain all of it. But for the look that we're going for, I do want the Vision 3 with a print film. And you're gonna see this in a lot of modern movies. Look at pretty much like any Christopher Nolan film and you're gonna see this emulation going on. Well, not even emulation, he's just shooting it, which is great. It's very expensive, but it's great. This is a much cheaper way to do it. <laughs> um, so just put that on there for now and we're gonna adjust some other stuff. Uh, the next thing I would wanna do is adjust my black point white point and exposure, contrast, all that kind of stuff that's just gonna give you a baseline of what your, your feel for your image is gonna be. 
So we have a pretty high black point and a decent white point right now. So we're just going to adjust those. Get a nice black point here. I see that I have some clipping on this in the image. So I'm just going to bring that white point to like there. If I toggle this on and off, you can see our exposure is pretty close to what it was actually shot at, which is good. I'm going to bring in some contrast. Uh, not too much. That's looking okay there. It looks like, oh, we didn't clip anything at all. Keep adjusting here. Bring in some more contrast. Black point, white point. Okay, everything's looking pretty nice there. If we wanted to adjust our exposure here, we could. Uh, and what's great about this exposure knob is again, it's not a digital exposure knob. This is the way that film would react to actually being exposed a different way. So you're getting a much different result with this than you would with like a curve or something because this is just a one-to-one. -one. If you're using Dehancer, I recommend using the tools inside of it rather than using stuff inside of DaVinci, at least for this section. Uh, the analog range limiter limits your dynamic range to what the film would actually be capable of. Um, and we can keep adjusting here if we want to keep that on. Bring back that contrast a little bit. Uh, color density is really fun. Uh, you can see it's kind of messing with the red in the background. I don't really know how to explain this, but I like the way it looks. So what's also really nice about Dehancer is that it works for all skill levels, whether you have 50 years experience with film or you have never picked up a stills camera in your life and you're just using this to get a cool look. It's very intuitive. It's very simple to use, very straightforward. And that's what's really great about the software. So. Hats off to the people at Dehancer for making it really easy to use. Uh, one more thing you can mess about with is the push and pull. So this is gonna say, um, okay, I overexposed, underexposed my shot, and in the development process, I'm compensating for it and pushing and pulling my image. So you can add this in here. I kind of like what it's doing, pulling a little bit, like it's bringing in some more green in her face. So I'm gonna add that. Uh, so the next thing we're going to go through is the color head. Now this is where I would white balance my image to start rather than using the temperature tint compensation that's up here. So this is adjusting your printer lights essentially the way that the analog process would go about it. A lot of colorists refer to these Lift Gamma Gain wheels as printer lights, but they are kind of a, you know, put in, you, you put this in and you get that out of it kind of result. Whereas with this, you're getting an actual reaction between light and paper, at least an emulation of it. And you can get even more of an emulation of it if you turn off this preserve exposure. Because basically this would be, hey, I'm exposing this to less blue light and I'm getting this reaction out of it. I'm exposing this to more green light and you know less, less green light and getting this reaction out of it. So really interesting way to kind of balance an image. Or you could turn this on and just get the, just get the color basically. So we're going to kind of adjust this. I kind of like what it's doing with the red. That looks really nice. So we're going to start there. But if I turn this up and down, you can kind of see it's changing the exposure value a little bit. And that's just from the amount of time you're exposing it to those lights, essentially. So this is like an actual analog printer light emulation, which is really fun. Next up on here, we have film grain. I'm going to enable this. Hopefully it comes up on YouTube. We'll see if it actually comes up on YouTube. But you got tons of options here. I'm sure this is everybody's favorite part of using a film emulation. Uh, you can adjust the size of the grain, how much grain is there. You can adjust the resolution, so how fine the grain is and where it reacts in each of these areas. Um, what's really fun about Dehancer's film grain is that it's not just an overlay. From what I understand, it's not just an overlay that goes over the image, but Dehancer has created an algorithm to how the grain reacts to light, shadow, the colors in your image, all that kind of stuff. So it isn't just an overlay that's going over the top of it. So you're actually getting a very natural looking grain. In my opinion, this is the best grain that I've seen um, from OFX plugins, other plugins you can download. This is by far my favorite so far. So great job Dehancer with the, with the film grain. Uh, next on here, we have Halation. Uh, I'm gonna disable the film grain for now. Um, I could kind of talk about Halation and what it does and you know, the science behind it for a very long time. But basically it's adding a bit of chromatic aberration around the highlights of your image that typically results in a red hue. Um, this happens when light goes through your lens and through your motion picture camera and the light bounces back onto the film from the back of the camera and hits the red channel of your film. 
uh, and it causes the highlights of your, image, of your image to turn a little bit red. That's basically, in a nutshell, what halation is. Um, there isn't a whole lot showing up on this image. It's kind of adding a little bit in like this section of red, but mess around with it. It's really fun. Uh, there's another OFX plugin inside of Resolve for halation that you can add here, and there's some more options in there. Um, this is also a way you can add bloom to an image in your OFX, but uh, plenty of ways to mess with that. Let's get the answer back up on here. There we go. Uh, bloom is really cool. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's adding some bloom to your highlights. If I full screen this, you can kind of see there's some highlight fall off on her face now. It is kind of like a ProMist filter, not really. Uh, it mostly emulates the look of like a vintage film lens. Uh, definitely mess around with it. I put it on just about everything. And then up next we have Vignette, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, film breadth is gonna be the exposure over time. So if I like play, uh, this is Ari Raw, so we'll see if it plays. Basically what film breath does is it changes the color and exposure of her image as it's being fed through like projector. So you can see the color of her skin is kind of changing and the neon sign behind her is changing. That's film breath and typically happens with like a projector or something like that. Um, so that's kind of fun to add. Not something I would use for everything, but it's definitely a stylistic choice. And then same thing with gate weave. It's another Let's see, well, it's kind of like a jitter that happens if film is being fed pr through a projector or something like that. Uh, you can't really see it on here. I'm playing back Ari raw footage on my computer right now. So uh, you can't super see it, but it is something that happens with like a projector or something like that. Um, so another stylistic choice and it does like auto crop, you can see here. Uh, and then you got like false color, things like that, that you can use, which is nice for them to add that kind of stuff. Um, so overall, that is kind of Dehancer in a nutshell, most of the tools at least. Uh, we can do some temperature compensation up here, tint, that kind of stuff. And then you can also add more nodes underneath, above it, and anything you want. But this is a really nice starting point, I think, for Dehancer. You can also, you know, uh, add some grain on it and you have a pretty nice film emulation. So um, that's kind of start to finish how I would attack Dehancer. If you have any questions or anything like that, put them in the comments. If I said something completely stupid and you want to correct me, 100%, I won't pretend to know everything. Just put a comment in the description and I'll pin it so people can see the correct stuff as well. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like. If you don't like this video, please leave a dislike. It lets me know what you guys would like to see in the future. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks guys. Bye.